also know as Trey Amazing. And this is Ringside Presents Corner Confession. And I am here with Dennis Freeland, who is the manager? Co-owner. Co-owner of the infamous Trapeze. And if you live in Atlanta or Fort Lauderdale, then you know what Trapeze is. So I'm going to let him give the best introduction because, you know, I could try myself, but it won't do him justice. But Mr. Freeland, tell everybody who you are and what exactly your background is here at Trapeze. Uh, well, my partner and I started Trapeze about 25 years ago. Um, our first club uh, actually burned down after being open for about six months mm -hmm. and uh, we rebuilt um, several years later we then built the facility here in Atlanta and I guess you'd say the rest is history. Okay. And the other facilities in Fort Lauderdale. Correct. So what was the inspiration behind uh, starting a club like Trapeze? I've known about Trapeze ever since I've been in Atlanta since 1997, and I've always heard about this club out there that people talk about. It's like, you go on the club Trapeze, or whatnot. So the reputation of this club definitely precedes it. But what exactly inspired it? What was the muse behind starting a club like this? Sure. Um, my wife and I, and Alan and his wife, were in the swinging lifestyle, and back in the day, if I use that term, it makes me sound old, which I actually am, <laughs> um, there were no uh, what you would consider to be upscale uh, swinging facilities. Um, swinging was a very underground type lifestyle. What few clubs there were around uh, basically were, you know, just small one night a week, uh, below the radar, um, you know, a, a facility, sometimes uh, you'd get a club that maybe had a DJ or something, highly unusual. Uh, many times it was music in a boom box and chicken mm. wings, okay? Mm. So, the we just felt that the lifestyle deserved something better than that. Uh, and, you know, we had always felt that having an upscale, respectable facility for swingers to meet and enjoy each other's company and have an evening out uh, was something that there had been had, had never been addressed and that literally was the impetuous or the reason for us to start uh, was basically we just wanted a facility that we could be proud of to say that that's where we went uh, and it would be something that would be an asset and a positive thing for the lifestyle okay Okay, very good. So, some years back, I was doing um, a radio spot, and we, myself and my co-host, we were we were talking about swinging, and I was the one who was supposed to be moderating the conversation, even though I'm, I'm not a swinger myself, mm -hmm. but I was in a position where I had to kind of Google swinging, Google the history. Um, I understood that, well, I understand that swinging, um, for a lot of people, it the origins go back to... Uh, Air Force bases, or what was it, Air Force or Navy bases, or something like that? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> it was something, you know, because it, I read up something about key parties, because I didn't know what a key party was, and then I had to Google it, and then it, that's when it talked about um, many pilots and their wives all stationed on bases and going to parties where they would take their keys, put in a fishbowl, and then you have to, you know, whoever pulls out your keys and, you know, you would sleep with them. Mm -hmm. And so I remember doing this research because I wasn't sure the correlation or how key parties related to swinging. Um, but yeah, for anybody else out there, you know, for the people out there who are interested in swinging, uh, there's something that, you know, they can Google as far as looking at the origin because everything has origins. So for a typical night here at Trapeze, you know, what would you say are some of the like demographics? Like, you know, would you say more blue collar, more white collar, older, younger, more diverse, or, you know, what would you say are, you know, some of the key demographics that you a, see? A, a, a typical demographic, I'm going to say, is probably more white collar than blue collar, mm -hmm. um, although it's a mix. And, you know, we have people from really all walks of life. And uh, as far as a, uh, 
a, a racial demographic. It's a very mixed demographic as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians. There, there is not any real particular limitation. Um, every night has a little bit different blend or mix than other nights do. And, uh, you know, we have always prided ourselves at Trapeze of being very inclusive, Mm -hmm. regardless of who you are, what you are, you know, are you rich, are you poor, it doesn't really matter, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, At the end of the day, this is a lifestyle that people choose because they're looking for a little something different. Uh, They want to add a little spice to their lives, Um, uh, you know, and it's just, it's, people are here by choice, and... We have tried to be as accommodating. You can be thin, you can be heavy, you can be tall, short, doesn't matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, um, you know, I've, I've been here maybe two or three times. Um, I didn't sexually participate, but definitely, you know, I've expressed to people ever since then, it's been like maybe eight years since I've been here, mm-hmm. and I've expressed to people like, look, great place to get your voyeur on if you are a people watcher. It is a great place for that. I mean, it's not, there's definitely no pressure to actually participate when I was here with my girlfriend at the time. However, um, you know, we certainly enjoyed the evening. We certainly enjoyed all we saw. And you're right, you know, to your point, the demographic, I mean, the audience was extremely diverse. Um, it wasn't anything where you could stereotype anybody, you know, for something like this. Like you literally, you know, because I would tell anybody as far as uh, trapeze, the person that you sit next to, you know, in your cubicle or on the same pew at church, or you know the people you run into the grocery store same people so there's really no um specific type so you know from the years you say you you guys have been in operation for 25 years how in a city like atlanta which we are in the bible belt do you run and sustain a successful organization like trapeze given you know all the you know, religiosity, everything that's going on here. How does that how does that sustain itself in a place like Atlanta? Well, Atlanta's a very large metropolitan area and yes, it's I guess theoretically in the Bible belt. Um it, we never really looked at it that way. Um I think swingers cross all lines. Um you know, I mean to give you a case in point for many years in Fort Lauderdale, uh we had uh, several couples who were Hasidic Jews mm. that came in. Now, that's about as rigid of a lifestyle as you can get. And, you know, I say that very respectfully. Uh, but, uh, you know, this, this I think the desire to, um, you know, stray perhaps outside of matrimony or, uh, you know, given norms um, probably is something that affects everyone across the board. Um, trapeze is not operated actually as a real business it is operated as a private membership club okay because of that there are there's some bridges that we're able to cross that you normally would not okay Um, it was not a um, a, a a quick decision to move for to you know to open a second you know location in Atlanta. Uh, we originally started, of course, in the Fort Lauderdale area, um, but uh, it was one that was undertaken with uh, very careful legal help and advice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know the the T's were crossed and the I's were dotted, and because of that, you know we've been able to operate here ever since. Uh, you know we've been in this location about 15 years. Nice. So. Nice. Very good. So, you know, given everything that I'm pretty sure you and your partner have heard regarding swinging and whatnot, what do you think, um, just given your background, what are some of the biggest misconceptions that people have about, you know, membership into a club like Trapeze or just a swinging lifestyle, you know, in general? The swinging lifestyle in general is actually more about socializing than it is about sex or swapping. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, probably the biggest misconception that uh, people have is the uh, pornography based concept of what swingers are or what a swingers club might be uh, I think the you know the the visual concept is you know you open the door and here's a gigantic pile of naked people uh, having sex okay it's probably about as far from the truth as you could be um, at Trapeze, uh, it's very much a nightclub atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a DJ every night, all night long. 
Um, we serve a full food dinner buffet. The food is uh, awesome. I will say and, that. And uh, you know, it's uh, and and we have it, it's it's very much just a social environment, a lot more than it is a sexual environment. Uh, we have many, many couples, many members that come into the club, have been doing so for years, and have probably never swapped. Mm. Okay, uh, It's about the atmosphere. It's about the excitement that it adds to someone's marriage. Uh, it's about someone's ability to enjoy a erotic atmosphere, but not necessarily participate in any particular activity. So... Um, it, and many couples form social bonds here that will last a lifetime mm. and have nothing to do with swapping or swinging. Understood. Not mad at that. Not mad at that. So, you know, given, you know, the, the nature of trapeze, well, you know, this, this is something that I've been wanting to ask. Who came up with the name trapeze? Like, what, why trapeze? My business partner is from New York, and many, many years ago, uh, there was a small club in New York called La Trapeze. And, of course, the, a trapeze, in its literal sense, is an object that a circus performer or someone swings on. Hmm. Okay? It was just kind of a, just a play cor on corny play on words mm -hmm. <laughs> that we thought of. Mm -hmm. um, we borrowed the name. The, that particular club that I spoke about had gone out of business, and we dropped the L.A., and it just became Trapeze. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. so, you know, for people out there, you know, we're gonna, this is going to you know, upload directly to the YouTube channel. For the people out there who are going to be watching this, we are going to have people who are you know, veteran swingers who've been in this lifestyle for many, many years, but you also gonna have people who are curious, who may be toying with the idea, you know, they may be single, they may be in a committed relationship or married, and may be thinking about, you know, asking themselves whether or not this may be the lifestyle for me or maybe not. What would you t say to someone like, who may be on the fence, someone who may be thinking about it, but, you know, they're kind of afraid or shy, you know, as far as, um, you know, sticking their toe in the water, what would you say to someone who's thinking about it but may not be ready to make that leap? Yeah, understood. It's a, it's a huge leap for a married couple, particularly if you've been together perhaps a number of years, mm -hmm. okay? So my advice would be, number one, establish some ground rules before you even come into the club. In other words, how far do you want to let things go on a given night or on your first visit, okay? But make some ground rules, stick to the ground rules, and respect each other's uh, feelings about that, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we find that couples who um, become long-term swingers, I guess if I can use that phrase, are those who have boundaries, are those who have respected each other's boundaries, um, and are those who have, you know, just worked within the the guidelines that they set for each other um, and that's that would be my my best advice okay okay sounds good sounds good I mean you know it's, it's you wouldn't advise anybody to just jump you know head first in something like this without being you know without having that conversation or having those ground rules with that the if, if you value your present relationship then you know keeping those rules and boundaries I, I think are essential mm -hmm. to you know swinging becoming a, a successful lifestyle. Okay. Um, many people jump into the lifestyle for a year or two or three. Uh, it's perhaps done to fulfill what they perceive as a need of their marriage or of themselves individually. Um, uh, they will you know stick their toe in the water so to speak for a while and then they decide that you know what this is no longer for us okay we've satisfied our curiosity we've we've accomplished what we were trying to accomplish in our marriage um, and now we're going to move on mm. okay other couples will remain in the lifestyle for literally years and years and years uh, I can say that in Fort Lauderdale we have two or three couples who have probably come to the club almost every Saturday night for every day we've been opened. Nice. <laughs> so, Sound like commitment. <laughs> yeah, it's a commitment. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you have some people that feel like um, jumping in this lifestyle actually saved their marriage. Um, you know, you're going to have people who feel like, you know, the 
regardless of they you know even from a sexual standpoint when they talk about you know being with one person for the rest of their lives and the sex getting monotonous getting predictable getting boring and whatnot and you have some people that feel like you know what trying something new getting out of our comfort zone you know it's okay to color outside the lines and you know having that conversation with a partner um, seeing where their mind is at and actually exploring certain sexual possibilities and there have been certain testimonials from people saying you know what this lifestyle saved our marriage mm -hmm. um, do you encounter people like that quite often do you, you encounter the people that feel like you know what this lifestyle was you know the thing that truly galvanized our marriage uh, we get that a lot um, uh, you know I, I would not want to throw out there that swinging is a fix-all to all marital problems it's mm -hmm. not you know if the marriage is basically unsound to start with um, swinging will just exaggerate those problems and it'll become a crash and burn mm -hmm. okay um, but to couples who have really a deep commitment to each other uh, they have a deep commitment to the marriage, you know, not only from a sexual standpoint, but just from an emotional standpoint or a, a, an ability to, uh, you know, bond and create a life for themselves. Yes, we hear a lot of times that, you know what, when we started swinging, wow, our sex life went off the charts. Mm. Okay. And we hear that, you know, it, that we've always heard that type of thing. So, again, it's not something for everyone, you know. You have to have a mindset that allows you to be accommodating to participating in this lifestyle. Um, you know, if you have serious jealousy issues, Ooh. this is this is not the place for you, okay. Uh, yeah, I can see that. You know, and, and some people have those type of emotional challenges. Um, so, again, it's, it's not a fix-all for everything. And it's not a fix-all for everybody, but I would certainly say that if you feel like it's something that may help or that you desire, at least stick your toe in the water again with some pre-arranged boundaries, pre-agreed to limitations, and see where it takes you. You might come two or three times and all of a sudden, you know what, this is not for us. Mm -hmm. And you might come two or three times and it's like, you know what, this, this is working for us. This is helping us. We're communicating better. We're having better sex. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, we're just becoming friends again, rather than just co-inhabitors. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes you know, when you talk about communication, um, I think you'd be surprised what your partner may be into or may be open to until you actually sit down and actually have that, that conversation. That's correct. Yep. Um, I knew a couple that, that talked about, you know, the it was the wife's idea to approach the husband and say, hey, what do you think about this? And to her surprise, the husband was with it. Yes. Ironically, um, it is normally the wife mm. that gets a couple into the lifestyle. I wonder why that is. I, mean, I, I think women are a little more open to, uh, you know, coloring outside the lines, as you said before. Mm -hmm. um, I think women in general are a little more bold about stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's a fact that if you've been in the lifestyle a long time, you come to realize that, yeah, it's the women that initiate the first visit normally. Um, and honestly, in a swinging relationship, it's usually the woman that establishes the boundaries. Okay. Right. This is, you know, this is where we're at. This is where we go. You know, let's not violate this. And we're all going to have a lot of fun and a, a good time and enjoy ourselves and enhance our marriage while we're at it. So. Nice. Okay. Well, before we wrap this up, uh, any, you know, closing uh, remarks in terms of are there any events coming up for the club you want people to know about or um, do you have a, a social media website you want to plug? To we, we have a strong social media presence, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, also a website. Um, go to any of those, just trapezeclub.com will get you to any of that, okay? Uh, we do a lot of promoting on social media. Um, you know, it's easy to sign up for an Instagram account or go on our website and leave your email address. You'll immediately begin receiving emails. Uh, we have events um, every weekend uh, that we promote. Uh, and, uh, you know, once you see the promotional materials, you can pick and choose something that interests you. Okay. Nice. 
Nice. Very good. Thank you so much, Mr. Freeland. This has been awesome. This has been Ringside Presents Corner Confession. Everybody out there, please follow us, ringsidedebates.com. Make sure you find our Facebook group, our uh, private community. Just uh, request to join, and myself or one of the admins will let you in. And with that, thank you so much, and we bid you adieu. Thank you.